Okay, so first of all, if you're going to do a calibration curve, you need to pop your chemical, in this case, uh, copper 2 plus ions in water, through a colorimeter or spectrophotometer, same kind of thing, and find out the maximum ab uh, absorbance, what wavelength the maximum absorbance occurs in. So since we're just looking at visible here, looking at the absorbance, the maximum is a, bit, is a kind of orangey red. So that's called lambda max. That's about 700 nanometers. So that's one reason, well, that's the reason why uh, copper two ions in water is blue. It's the complementary color to kind of the orangey red that's been absorbed. Okay, so that's step one. Find the wavelength that has absorbed the most. In this case, about 700. Now you need to make a set of standards of the chemical. Uh, so I've drawn a little diagrammatic representation of the five different concentrations of the copper two plus in water that I'm going to use. You probably need to use a, an original standard that you're given and then do dilutions from that. Then we need to run these through the spectrometer or the colorimeter to get the absorbance and that will give us the calibration curve using the so-called Beer-Lambert law, which is what we're all after here. All right then, so let me fill in some data. So concentration at the top and absorbance, how much of this uh, orangey ready light has been absorbed down the bottom. So this data I would get from my colorimeter. All right then, so step three, I've got to take this data of different concentrations and their different amount of absorptions and put them on a graph. And then that's a Beer-Lambert graph that we're making here. Absorption versus concentration. And it should be a straight line. If it starts to bend towards uh, either of the ends, then it's not very useful anymore. You've just got to keep it to the part that's straight. Okay, so I'm going to quickly draw a graph of the data that I got by putting different concentrations through the colorimeter and measuring their absorption. This will give me uh, a calibration curve. And the kind of theory that you're using here is the Beer-Lambert law theory, that absorption is proportional to concentration. So if I had an unknown sample, let's say it has an absorption of 1. It has to be the same chemical, of course, but with an unknown concentration. If it has an absorption of 1, then I can use my graph to calculate the concentration. So dotting along, dotting down, it's about 1.2 molar, my unknown concentration. All right, then, let's move on to the trickier stuff. There's my orangey-red light going through my sample of copper 2+. I'll represent that by little blue dots, because it's blue, and it absorbs orange. So some of my orange light is being absorbed as it goes through the sample, and then it passes through, and the detector will pick up how much radiation is arriving. So important things are I with a little zero, and that's the intensity of the incoming light. The intensity of the light once it's passed through the sample, which is going to be less intense because of absorption, is I. Obviously the length of the path of the light through the cuvette is important, and that's one centimeter normally. The molar absorptivity, that's the same for each type of solution, and C is the concentration. So all of these things were put together by Beer and Lambert to give the Beer-Lambert law, which is in the data booklet. So you don't have to learn it. And the IB rarely asks about it. So all of this is really absorbent.